the amount of vaccine we need um, will be significantly more than uh, what we have now. And that's why the IP waiver will be very important. The provision of waiving IP was meant for this condition, for emergencies. And this is unprecedented. This is the head of the World Health Organization talking about vaccine IPs or the intellectual property of vaccinations. There has been a huge move worldwide to get companies making vaccines to release their IPs to the rest of the world. Negotiations are on at the World Trade Organization on whether or not a waiver of the IP rights of the COVID-19 vaccine is possible. Well, if you and people around you have been confused by what's happening on the world stage, watch and share this video to know what this means. Now, intellectual property refers to an idea, a design, etc. that somebody has created and that the law prevents other people from copying. Think about about how anything to do with any of these characters, the movies, their remakes, the songs, the games, the merchandise, all belong to one company, the Walt Disney Company. When it comes to vaccines, it means that the formula for the vaccine and the technologies used to create and dispense it are protected by law. These IPs are usually held by the companies developing the vaccines. In the case of the COVID-19 vaccine, that would be the likes of Pfizer, AstraZeneca and Bharat Biotech, among others. But what is this intellectual property in the first place? There are different kinds of IPs. The main forms of IP are patents, copyrights, trademarks and trade secrets. Each type of IP protection is different, varying in the subject matter that can be covered, how long it is valid for, and how much it costs for someone else to buy or borrow to create the same thing. Since a vaccine involves different types of things from its composition to delivery system to technology customized to create it, the IP of vaccines can include a combination of these forms. In the medical world, these IPs limit who can produce a certain kind of medical product for a specified period of time, giving the IP holder a monopoly on that market. Patents in particular can be process patents or product patents. Product patents mean that no matter what process you use, no one else can manufacture the same product. Process patents, on the other hand, allow other players to make the same product by using different means or technologies. Well, getting a vaccine to the market involves complex science as well as complicated business deals. The vaccine market has a handful of major players and creating a vaccine takes a lot of money and resources that can run into billions of dollars. With the world crippled by COVID-19, there was additional time pressure to create a vaccine as soon as possible. All of these factors play a role in the final price we pay for each dose of the vaccine as the companies making them need to recover their developmental costs. These deals are negotiated by governments with the developers and manufacturers. With the COVID-19 vaccine, some of the companies had come to certain not-for-profit deals to sell these vaccines. These companies, however, continue to hold the IPs for these products, giving them control over the worldwide market for vaccines and still do estimate some pretty large profits. Some analysts expect the COVID-19 vaccine market alone to become a 10 billion dollar a year industry or even larger. Pharma companies are not so willing to get rid of their IPs. They believe that letting go of such IPs will damage innovations in the field and impact investments in medical science in the future, as it will weaken the value of intellectual property overall. American pharma companies have also warned their government about the effects of such novel technologies in the hands of countries that they have a tenuous relationship with, like China and Russia. In fact, Moderna made their patents available online last summer, but this alone was not enough. Some argue that simply releasing the IP will not make the vaccine more accessible to all. There are other challenges that vaccine production needs to overcome. What are they? The challenge lies not only in just having the vaccine patent available, but also the necessary expertise, infrastructure and equipment to ensure production of the IP. In some parts of the world, that kind of technology and knowledge transfer could take years. Given the millions and millions of vaccines that need to be made, there are also problems like a shortage of raw materials, such as lipid nanoparticles and specialized equipment such as bioreactor bags that needs to be dealt with. Export and import regulations of various countries also have a huge role to play in availability of vaccines and the things needed to make them. Easing these regulations as well would go a long way in making them more accessible. The waiver of vaccine IPs then becomes a first step in bringing about all of these changes that can allow for more and more vaccines to be produced. This can also allow for more vaccines to be produced in middle-income countries and not limit production to just higher-income countries, which is how things currently are. 
The move for an IP waiver was initiated by India and South Africa last year. The negotiations at the World Trade Organization required all 164 member countries to come to an agreement on the best way to waive off the IPs, and any one of those countries has the power to veto the whole deal. The WHO is also trying to encourage companies with mRNA vaccines to share their patents and technical know-how with regional hubs in poorer countries. So where do things currently stand? In negotiations at the World Trade Organization, India along with other countries is now calling for the vaccine waiver to be extended. This means that the waiver is not just for the vaccine product, but for other medical tools and know-how in order to deal with prevention, treatment and containment of the pandemic for the next three years. These negotiations are still ongoing and we can only hope for a beneficial outcome. Hey, if you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. The whole point of our channel is to ask compelling questions and explore intriguing stories. So tell us what you'd like to watch next in the comments below.